guys and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for being here if you are returning if it's your first time please do subscribe do all the nice things below like comment subscribe also please do share my videos and also do turn on your post notification bell so you do know when i post a new video so we are continuing with the series i guess um i don't like calling the series i don't know why but anyway we'll continue with the series of um wrongful convictions in south africa and today i will be focusing or speaking about Njabulo Ndrovu and maybe some of you might know him um he was actually wrongfully accused and convicted of rape and so yes there's a story that i will be focusing on today i hope you guys enjoy this video um and again if you do have somebody who has been in the limelight who you know who has been wrongfully accused please do um, mention their name in the comment section so that I can check them out. Um, yeah, let's get into the video Okay, so Njabula's story starts when he is 19 years old and he is a second year student at the University of KwaZulu-Natal Back then, I think it was called the University of Westville, something like that Um, so anyway, he's doing his law, um, degree and he gets arrested for rape, for gang rape to be specific and Yeah, that's the beginning of the downward trajectory of his life if i can put it that way but anyway he gets accused of gang raping a girl who was actually pregnant at the time and she accuses 10 men of gang raping her while they were at a tavern and of the 10 five get accused three get acquitted and then two actually get convicted so initially in the beginning stages Njabula was actually arrested with two of his friends, but they were let go. He was happy for them, you know, because he knows they didn't do anything. But then he was also sad for himself because now he's stuck in this predicament where he's being accused of rape. And he says that he knows this girl. Let's start with he knows this girl. They are family friends. The fathers work together. Um, they are neighbors. They just know they are well acquainted with each other. So it's not like the girl is a stranger or anything um fast forward so this ha um all happened in 2002 and in 2005 that's when jabulo is um imprisoned to life and he is sent to west to westville prison to serve out his life sentence and yeah he basically he did try to appeal but then obviously he was unsuccessful because like i mentioned in the previous video it's very it requires a lot of money to appeal your case um, all the legal fees, you know, um, getting the transcripts from the last trial, all those things, they require money. Um, so anyway, fast forward to 2015. 2015, a friend of Njabulo's who was an ex-classmate, so they used to be in uni together. He, I guess, hears about Njabulo's situation and he decides he's going to help Njabulo pro bono, which means he's going to help him for free. So... He, the, the, the case is taken to court again and there were, according to the lawyer, the new lawyer, the friend, there were a lot of irregularities that happened in the initial trial. And so Njabula was actually acquitted by a, a full bench in the Peter Maritzburg High Court and they found that there were so many wrong, like just a lot of irregularities, like there was just so many things that happened that were questionable um the magistrate was basically like rooting for the for the state not not exactly rooting but he was helping the state like everything he was doing was to help the state and not being fair you know to the accused there was actually dna evidence that proved that or the lack thereof lack of dna evidence um, and then it proved that Njabulo wasn't there. Njabulo wasn't at the scene. Njabulo, like, there's no DNA that links him to the crime. And that evidence wasn't um, presented to the lawyers in the initial case. That evidence was in the court and the prosecutor's, like, possession, but it wasn't presented. So, yeah, the, magist the magistrate was just doing snacks things, you know? Um, so, yeah, anyway, and that is what was worked to towards the demise of Njabulo because I feel like if the magistrate was fair and you know playing an open hand things would have turned out different um 
I think this is this is where people will feel like you know people who work in the justice system they rig the system and then wrong people get arrested and it's just it's awful it's it's really awful but Jabula did say in relation to this that he doesn't really fault the justice system he just feels like the people who work within the justice system are the one who like make the wrong decisions or make mistakes i feel like he's very humble he's very like um mature about it all because i don't think i'd have that outlook but anyway moving on in 2018 njabulo is released because of the lack of evidence and if you remember njabulo was 19 when he went into prison at this stage in 2018 he's 35 years old my goodness guys that's 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 like Yo, oh, that's a lot of yo, that's a lot of years. And anyway, a lot of things happened while he was in prison. Um, he he apologized to his um the the person who accused him. He actually sent a letter to him to her a letter of forgiveness, and he did this in the hopes of I guess he wanted to do it I guess, but then also it would work to his beneficial when he was um going on parole so he he wrote a letter and the girl never replied and so she he called the girl and the girl said no i forgive you you know i'm cool but i cannot write you a, a, a forgiveness letter back which would be a problem because i guess Njabulo needed or wanted the forgiveness letter like a physical letter um but that didn't happen so it broke his heart because here he is asking for forgiveness one for something he didn't do and the person he's asking for forgiveness from is not budging you know so it's like yeah no i can only imagine i really can only imagine anyway he did attain his llb guys he he passed with flying colors um he attended unisa unisa while he was inside and yeah um another thing that happened while he was inside was that he lost his brother who was one of his big um supporters and you know so he didn't know how to process that he didn't know how to process the loss and the fact that he couldn't go to the funeral because they denied him the ability to go to the funeral he kept out of trouble for the most part you know i guess there were pressures to join gangs as you can imagine but he says he never found like he never found it necessary to join a gang or like he didn't see the benefit of him joining a gang or like any of those funny things but then nothing bad ever happened to him like he didn't he wasn't violated he wasn't like beat up or anything like so yeah i guess yeah he tried to stay out of trouble as much as he did and i think the the other thing that he mentioned was that um he was young you know he was 19 he was looking forward to finishing his llb and you know getting into the profession and you can only imagine also his family they were heartbroken you know and he was heartbroken for them and the family had to use the dad's retrenchments my retrenchment money and the mom was a cleaner so they had to use all that money to pay for his legal fees and to send him to school um while he was inside um so he got his llb and then he struggles to get a job because obviously um he has a record um and that's the thing i think from my previous video most people ask me like isn't like when you're wrongfully accused aren't you supposed to like isn't your record supposed to be cleared and stuff like that it is supposed to be cleared but then obviously it might take longer in south africa i mean hello um but yeah i um because what happened with njabulo is that he he had to they told him when he left prison that they would clear his record but then when he started applying for jobs you know the record was still there um disturbing his whole process um because he would get interviews but then they would be like ish your record and especially when they see that it's for rape you know um yeah so the record automatically disqualifies him and so he had to go again to like submit or to apply for his record to be expunged so yeah he had to go um to the police station i think um for that to happen uh so he's really eager to start his career um he 
I don't know about now, but because yeah, this was this information is from a while back. Um, so he feels also. I read that he feels like you know he's behind in life. All his friends are doing good. They have families. They have careers, and you know there he is, and he's stuck, and he just feels like he has a lot of catching up to do um, in life. Okay, so with this one, I think one of the the most asked question would be now. What must happen with the accuser because he accused him she accused him jabulo jabulo spent 13 years of his life in prison for something he didn't do what about the accuser like should she be arrested for um falsely accusing someone you know as much as we can focus on the accuser i feel like the justice system also had a big hand in it because if somebody accuses you now you go to courts i feel like the court is the one who's supposed to like if the magistrate has done their job if the courts had done their job njabula wouldn't be in prison because there was no evidence right so as much as the accuser falsely accused you for the conviction part for you to spend 13 years yes the accuser started this whole cycle but i feel like the justice system should act as a buffer and that's why it's very important for them to be fair and just that's why it's very important for them to take cases seriously because i feel like in some cases also the court is just like they want to be done with your case they just want to get rid of you know just out of faith like a pillar because they, they they don't want to deal with it anymore and they just want to have a conviction and they just want a thumbs up for society for um arresting a rapist but there were there were steps that were skipped you know it wasn't fair so i think as much as the accuser starts this whole cycle and yeah like i don't know what happened with her i don't know if they followed up you know for the false allegations and stuff like that but as for the justice system i feel like they should they should do a better job at being the buffer between the accuser and the accused um yeah so that is the story of Njabulon Grovu. In prison, he was actually called the unqualified lawyer until he got his um de his degree. And he got in his degree in 2018 when he was the same year he was released, and then later they had to call him the lawyer because he was now qualified. And yeah, so I hope he's doing good wherever he is. Um, these stories are really sad. Like for you to lose 13 years of your life for something you didn't do, and you were looking forward to being such a productive member of society you know yeah it affects everyone even the family because now they had to spend all the money that they had other plans for now they have to spend it on legal fees and other things um so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys enjoyed um yeah this story uh and i'll see you guys again next week like i said in the beginning of the video if you do know somebody comment their name below and i'll check out this story um Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.